Okay, before I begin, just a reminder, yours is the Chinese technology project. I just did the Roman technology project, like, so instead of China, I did ancient Rome. Because, of course, if I did the Chinese technology project, I mean, it'd be kind of easy just to copy and paste whatever I do. Um, so that is why I did Rome. But you do Chinese technology project, okay? Okay, great. Here's my example. All right, so I am Corey Stodic, also known as Miss Corey, and this is my Roman technology project. The first one I'm going to talk about is the Sub Subiaco Dam. So what is it? It's a series of three dams located in Lazio, Italy. The dam was 40 meters high, 13.5 meters thick, and 80 meters long. Um, it was a gravity dam, uh, meaning that it was made of stone or concrete. It was a slanted wall built in a river of, or other body of water. You can see here is a picture of an example of a Roman gravity dam, and you can see the slant. Uh, the slant of the walls forced the water to stop flowing, allowing the water to pool behind the wall, hence creating the dam. When was it made? It was created under Emperor Nero, who ruled from 58 to 64 CE. It's located in Lazio, Italy, uh, because it was a really popular summer vacation spot for the Roman emperors, um, including Emperors Nero, Claudius, and Hadrian. Here is a picture of the inside of the Villa of Nero today. You can still visit it. How or why was it used? So it was used for recreational purposes. Um, so Nero wanted a lakefront at a summer villa. So he had his engineers build this dam um, so he could have scenery to hold lavish summer parties and also to have really luxurious boat rides on the lake for parties to impress people. Unlike other dams, um, it did not help the surrounding people of Rome. Uh, because it was entirely for recreational purpose. Um, but otherwise, throughout the Roman Empire, dams were used for like drinking water reservoirs. Here is a bust of Nero, if you want to know what he looks like. So, how it affected the culture of ancient Rome? An example of Roman engineering for both water and concrete. So, for water engineering, um, it showed that gravity dams changed how drinking water reservoirs were created for the public. Um, so usually dams created those reservoirs, uh, which created a source of water for aqueducts. Um, here's a picture of an aqueduct here. And so the aqueduct would transport that freshwater source um, and like have it flow to a large city for public use. Um, it also was a good example of concrete engineering. Um, so concrete engineering and Ancient Rome included a mixture of sand, gravel, lime, volcanic ash, and water to create durable building materials. And this helped with the public, uh, with public building projects like dams, aqueducts, and housing. So again, here is a picture of an aqueduct made out of concrete. How it affects the culture of Rome today. So the Subiaco dams do not um, exist today. So they were actually accidentally destroyed in 1305 CE when two of the monks wanted to change the um, amount of water that got through the dam. They took two of the stones from the dam and the dam fell apart. Yeah. Um, you can still visit the town of Subiaco today. Um, so the town was created around the Subiaco Dam since it did eventually create a good reservoir for water. Um, and the public today can still visit the ruins of the dam in Nero's villa. Um, historians know about it due to the ruins of it that remain today. Uh, and there was also a painting found in a local abbey. And abbey is like where monks live. Um, that showed what the dam looked like before it fell apart. All right, Roman concrete. So what is it? It is a building material used to make houses, public buildings, dams, aqueducts, roads, walls, bridges, and a lot, lot more. Um, it was made from a mixture of sand, gravel, lime, ash, and water. Um, so when I say ash, it's typically a volcanic ash. So the mixing of the water and the lime and the ash hardened the gravel and the sand. 
um, then it is dried, creating the solid concrete. Um, and the mixture, a lot of the ingredients came from the Gulf of Naples, which is located in Italy. Here's a picture of it up here of what it looks like today. Um, it was mostly made there due to the volcanic ash um, from the surrounding volcanoes, uh, which was a hardening ingredient in concrete. So here's a picture of Mount Vesuvius in the background. So when was it made? Uh, so it was created about 150 BCE during the Roman Republic. Um, it became popular during the Roman Empire. Uh, so that was the time period that got really popular due to all the big building projects, such as the Colosseum. Um, it's unknown who first invented concrete, um, but Pliny the Elder, who is this dude right here, uh, he was the first person to write about its ingredients. How or why is it used? Uh, so it was first used to repair cracks in stone walls. Um, and then they're like, hey, this is actually really good stuff just to like straight up build with. So they used to create uh, large building projects with it. Um, it was very helpful to the people of Rome due to creating the aqueducts for water, um, building houses and public buildings for shelter, water reservoirs uh, were lined with concrete so the soil didn't contaminate the water. Um, and they also created bathhouses, which we will talk about in the next one. Um, so how did it affect the culture of ancient Rome? It allowed clean water to be stored and transported to the public. It also allowed massive structures for cultural events, the example being like the Colosseum of Rome. That's where up to 50,000 people could watch gladiator games, um, horse racing, battle reenactments, and worship gods and emperors. Uh, it was used by all people of Rome. Um, so concrete was used in rural palaces, all the way down to just the simple roads that people walk upon every day. Um, and it helped the history of Rome due to many concrete structures still standing today. The biggest example would be like the Colosseum, which you can see here in the corner, the Villa of Nero, and the Temple of Mercury. So how does it affect the culture of Rome today? So concrete is used around the world today, used on roads, tunnels, building structures. I'm sure if you look out the window right now, you'll probably see some sort of concrete. Um, but ancient Rome, Roman concrete structures still stand today for historians to analyze of how it was created. Uh, there's also written records about how concrete was made. Uh, those come from Pliny the Elder and also this dude named Vitruvius. Um, the famous museum to see concrete, one of the most famous, of course, is you can go see the Colosseum of Rome which is located in Rome, Italy. Uh, it brings in about 7 million tourists each year and it only costs $26 to get in, which I didn't think was bad. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the therme. So what is it? They are public bath houses. Um, so people back in ancient Rome didn't have like individual baths like we have today, they use public baths. Um, and it included multiple pools, typically some hot, some cold, um, undressing rooms, rooms to put on oils to clean the body because soap was super expensive, so they would just use oil. Um, and also sweat rooms to like sweat out the oils and then scrape off any of the dirt. Uh, the building was made out of stone and or concrete, um, and it was adorned with marble and bronze accents. There's also screens to keep out the bugs. Um, and the water was typically brought in by aqueducts. It could also be brought in by hot springs. Um, and again, usually there was like a hot, like a cold pool, pool in a hot pool. Uh, the first one was created. It was called the Bath of Titus, which was in 81 CE. Um, and these baths became really popular to, in the mid to late Roman Empire. Uh, so between kind of 81 and 330. Uh, there are multiple therme architects. Um, one of the most famous is Apollo Doris of Damascus uh, because he designed the Baths of Trajan, which you can see pictured here. This is just the outside of the wall. So how or why was it used? Um, so it became a social custom for cleansing oneself. So that meant better public hygiene. People are going to smell better. Um, so anyone could bathe. So lower, middle, and upper class would bathe together. Um, the only ones who couldn't bathe would be like the enslaved population. 
Um, the super upper class, like the emperors, had their own little bathhouses. Um, it became a very social place. So some included gymnasiums to practice sports, others libraries to share books and ideas. Um, and one of the big traditions, if a person wanted to become popular and like become a politician, uh, they would pay for like a large crowd of people to come into the there may to like bathe um, and they'd be like yay you paid for a bath you're awesome and then they become popular and then they have a higher chance of winning um, their office seat all right um, it also allowed uh, people of all classes to socialize again except for the enslaved population uh, the libraries allowed lower class access books so books had to be handwritten at that time um, so they were very expensive um, the bathing process was hours long so that allowed people to converse and share ideas on whatever they want politics inventions wars gossip um, and also allowed people to relax most romans bathed once a day and that's really increased the hygiene and health of the public um, enslaved people were not allowed to use their maze. Um, so this shows the separation of the lower class free people being able to bathe, but the lowest class, which is the enslaved people, could not. Um, how does it affect Rome today? So ruins of Roman bathhouses remain all over the old empire today. Um, example would be like the Baths of Trajan, located in Rome, Italy, the picture I showed you a few slides ago. Um, what you saw there was just the southwestern wall of it, where the library would have been located. Uh, but you can still bathe in a Roman bathhouse today. Yes, you'll have to go to Algeria for it, though. Um, but it's called Hammam Asalahin, um, which is located in Algeria. Uh, it was a Roman bathhouse created during the Flavian dynasty, which was between 69 and 96 CE. Um, again, it's located in Algeria. Locals and tourists still use it to bathe today. Um, and it's heated by a local hot spring. Here is my work cited. Thanks for watching. Bye.